Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be talking about printing PETG on the JG Aurora printer. So, uh, in short, PETG is polyethylene terephthalate. Yeah, I'll get that right. Terephthalate, I believe I got that correct. Uh, I'll have it down below. A, so the pieces is, is, is basically this is polyester. However, the G component, and this is why it's 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 okay to call it pet G because there are different type of pets or polyethylene terephthalates out there. And G is an, um, a moniker in the fact that glycol has been added to the filament to um, reduce hazing while it's it's heated. So when we talk about this, this is really, I think, uh, the unsung hero of 3D printing um, because it's very resilient. It um, appears to outgas very little in comparison to ABS. Uh, resiliency is crazy strong. So this is really a fantastic filament to work with. Uh, the challenge is you have to work rather warm with this. So you're gonna you're gonna be up above ABS temperatures a little bit, and this is where you run into a little bit of a problem if you don't have an all metal hot end. Now, with the JG Aurora, I ran this at 245C on the hot end and 100 on the bed, and printed really nice. Now I didn't get too aggressive with the retraction. So you'll see some a little bit of stringing down here in the bottom. And, and for reference, I've got the PLA version of a similar chess set that I printed also on the JG Aurora in PLA. Um, so I could probably pick it up, and I might have ran a little bit too hot. Again, I ran at 245. I didn't do a temperature tower uh, with this. And typically for something like PETG, I would want to do a temperature tower so I really get that dialed in. Because when you start getting up there in the higher temperatures, uh, stringing and artifacting like this become a little bit common. And the one thing is, is um, again, retraction with PETG is very important. Because again, if you over retract, you can run into a lot of, or the higher risk, let's put it this way, of nozzle clogging. So with this, I ran um, actually four, no, sorry, five millimeters of retraction on two millimeters of distance. Now, I think I could have tightened that up, but again, I didn't want to, I didn't want to get too aggressive being the first print because I'm not really for, that familiar with the hot end of the JG Roar and how it responds temperature-wise and all that, but it did very well. Also, with the 24-volt power supply, the heated bed came up to 100 degrees C in just no time flat. Uh, so very impressed with that. It held the temperature on the hot end very solidly, at least is what it reported throughout the print. So again, overall, I'm impressed. Now, uh, to clean this up, I would run a temperature tower in this particular filament. This is... Uh, um, so this is Hatchbox filament, and so um, I know I've had a couple people write me and say they, they run their filament around 240. Uh, I ran this filament between on various printers between about 240 and about 255, and again, it really depends on how the hot end holds the temperature is where I run it. And again, I highly recommend doing a temperature tower on this. If you're going to be printing this on a regular basis, which I really recommend this stuff, by the way, um, that's what I would do. But I just, number one, I wanted to see how the printer would perform just sort of out of the box. Because this is one of the things with the JG Aurora. I'm really treating this pretty much as out of the box. You know, how is it going to perform for Joe Average? How is the, you know, mechanics of it going to hold up in that? And again, I, I'm very happy. Again, my my uh, Creality CR10, I've never been able to get the bed past 90 degrees C. And to get it to 90 degrees C, it's been like 20 minutes. Within like five minutes, the bed on the JG Aurora was at 100 and I was printing. So very happy. Uh, adhesion to the bed was fantastic. And again, just like with um, uh, PLA, it held perfectly until it cooled down. Once it cooled down, popped right off, no issues at all. So again, here's um, proof it can print uh, PET G, and it does a pretty good job at it. So, anyways, hopefully you found this interesting. I'll have links to JG Aurora if you're thinking about getting one. Because I tell you what, you guys, I'm still very, very impressed. Again, two axis, uh, very nice extruder as well as hot end setup on it for being a sort of out of the box stock printer. Again, you can get better in the market, not saying that, but again, a stock out of the box, I've been impressed. I really like the touch screen. 
and so far everything about it it does have a few quirks because as i mentioned before in the onset video in, if the z-axis is too high you have to home it first or it does strange things but outside of that that's the only odd anomaly i found with it so anyways hopefully you found this interesting if you did give it a big thumbs up let me know what your settings are in general for pet g especially retraction i'm interested to hear what are you running for retraction and in general what are you running for temperature settings especially if you have hatchbox filament be interested to know in the comments below swag shop up there subscribe over there and comment below see you guys in the next video cheers please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects